Hey there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Today I'm going to be replacing the front brake pads on this 2011 Hyundai Santa Fe. This video will apply directly to 2007 to 2012 Hyundai Santa Fe's. So a little tape on your socket just keeps your wheels from getting scraped up. Again 21 millimeter. Now if your wheel is stuck on just thread a couple of the lug nuts back on loosely and then hit on the back side of the tire with a big hammer. A dead blow hammer if you have it works good. I guess I get to demonstrate that process. So remember you just want to hit on the tire, not on the rim. Okay so here are your brakes. You can see how worn down those old pads are. Also of course you want to inspect your your rotor but this one's actually in good shape so that's why we're just going to be doing what they call a pad slap today and just replacing the pads. We will be inspecting the slides and everything to make sure that they function properly. You want to look at your brake hose make sure it's not damaged or cracked. As much as you're upside down this is a good angle to show removing the upper mounting bolt and then the lower one will be the exact same process so that's 14 that's 18 see the 18 doesn't fit really tight um, 17 doesn't fit either 17 is too tight uh, so you can just use pliers or vice grips if you want So you can see they're not in there terribly good. It uh, doesn't take much effort to get them out. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the lower one. Now I can just use my pry bar to uh, pry this out of here. So just use a, a pry bar to uh, get your caliper out of there. And just make sure you don't drop this because you could damage the hose if you do. And another thing is, next we're going to compress this piston back, but when we do that, you want to check your reservoir under the hood and keep an eye on it, because when the brake pads are just worn, it might actually, if somebody has topped up the fluid, in the meantime, it might uh, be too full up there. When you compress this back, it might overflow, which would be bad, so double check that. Get these pads out, and I just need a, an old pad to, uh, to set on here. And then I have this tool, or you can use you can use a big C-clamp or big channel locks. So you are going to compress that piston back in there, so we have room to put the new pads in, which are a lot thicker. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and see if that's enough room because my reservoir is about ready to overflow here. So for a second, I'm going to put this, to set it back here like that so it can't fall okay so we have our new pads which i already had a look at wagner pads and then that you'll want to reinstall that back on the inner pad so just pay attention to that and then these clips you have new ones so these just clip in just change those out So I believe all the clips are the same. Now you see on here on the old pad and on the new pad, this is on the uh, rear pad and it's called a squealer and what it does is ride on the braking surface when your pad's almost worn out. You can see it was about ready to contact on this one and it just lets you know that you need to replace your brake pads. So that always goes on the inside, make sure you put it on the inside. Okay, now you just want to put a little grease in those sliders. I have this Bosch grease left over I like better, so I'm going to use it. That's just to make sure the, the new pads slide nicely in there. And you don't want to get any grease on your new brake pads, so clean off your hands afterwards. And like I said, the squealer goes to the, uh, to the back side there. And uh, one without squealer, of course, goes on the front side. It couldn't be simpler. 
just like that. So this little wear plate, I think that's redundant because this seems to have one on it too, if you can see. So you do want to put some grease, though, where that uh, piston rides on there. You see there's a friction surface there. You want to put a little grease on there as well. Just like that. And you also want to put a little bit on the pad here on the front side. Because you can see that's where that rides. Well, last thing before you throw this uh, caliper back on, just make sure that these slides work, that they're free moving. And they are, so we should be good to go here actually. Just put this on here. You might have to press those in. And then just get your mounting bolts back on here, back start it. Okay, and literally we just have to tighten these up. I'm going to use my impact. You might want to do it by hand. I'll include a torque spec for that. So now I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to take this cap off the bleeder. I'm going to loosen up the bleeder and bleed this caliper out and just get the old brake fluid out because I've already flushed my reservoir. If you watched my rear brake job video, you would have seen that. So it's 10 millimeter on that bleeder, but I got to get my my little one man bleeder set up on there first. So I'll show you that. So here we go. And the only trick with this, it's just an old pop bottle with a washer fluid hose going into it, but it needs to have brake fluid in it. That hose needs to be submerged in brake fluid so it can't suck air into the brake system. Now before you loosen this bleeder, you go ahead and put this hose on there. Just need to break it loose first because it's, it's rusted up bad. Hopefully I don't twist it off. That's always the risk when they're rusted up like this. No, I got it. Okay, I just cracked it loose. I'll put the hose back on before I get it right loose. Okay, now this is part of my brake system and I'm going to go in and pump the brake pedal and it's going to push the old fluid out of this caliper, suck some new fluid down from the reservoir and you'll have to keep topping up the reservoir with uh, DLT3 fluid as you go. So that's what I'm going to do, go into the vehicle and slowly pump the brakes now. There we go, about 10 pumps on the pedal and you can see the fluid level's gone up in the bottle about an inch. So now it's very important to tighten the bleeder completely before you remove that hose, otherwise you will suck air into the system. So just snug that up good. Hose off. Back in the bottle to keep it clean. Wipe this off. And replace the little dust cap. So now I'll just take some brake clean and wash this off in case I got any grease on it or anything. You can see I'm just finishing up the pads on the right side now. And I just want to point out something you do want to bed in your new pads is what it's called. So you want to do a bunch of hard stops from highway speed like from 60 mile an hour or above. You want to do a bunch of hard stops to break these new pads into this surface here. Okay, so now I just have to reinstall the wheel and torque it up to 80 foot-pounds. It is a good idea to retorque your wheels after you drive a little bit. Other than that, make sure you pump up your brakes before you put your vehicle in gear and make sure you top up your brake fluid with DLT3 brake fluid. Just make sure it's topped up and the cap is tight. So otherwise you're all done. It's going to be exactly the same process on the other side of the vehicle so I won't bother showing that. I do hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thanks a lot for watching Matt's Garage. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourself a great day.